All right, next game on the board. Who have we got? God Almighty. Uh, we got to talk about it. Auburn 24, LSU 19. So this is the biggest upset of the night. It, it wasn't Kentucky-Florida. It's, it it's, been, it's been what? 1999. Yeah. 1999, so 22 years. 22 years in, yeah. yeah. Since, since Auburn's gone into Baton Rouge and won a football game. Give me... This is so. This is the issue with uh, having a quarterback like Bo Nix, right? Is if you're an Auburn fan, you don't know what you're going to get week in and week out. And it, it's the word that I brought up at the beginning of the show: consistency. And there is none of it because Bo Nix can look like complete garbage and and lose his job in the Georgia State game, and then go into Baton Rouge and pull magic out of his rear end. It, the likes of which I have never seen before. The plays that he was doing last night were so unbelievable, and and it, they never should have. LSU was up nineteen to ten in the fourth quarter. I what what do you make of this game? I mean, what do we even do here? Uh, well, the problem is is LSU was up nineteen to ten and not twenty eight to ten. Okay, right. And four field goals, like four field of, goals in the red zone. Again. LSU is one dimensional. I know you want to talk about Bo. We'll get to Bo. No, no, no. I, how, I want to talk how about we got, How we got here is LSU cannot run the football. And when your offense is moving up and down the field a lot, that's not a big deal. When it's third and one or two, that's a problem. When it's fourth and goal or third and goal from the one yard line, that's a problem that you can't get a yard. And now you're Throwing the football to get one yard because you can't run it. But the, hey, so, let me let me interrupt you. There was a there was a fourth down that LSU went for. I don't know if it was in the third quarter or the fourth quarter, but they they lined up. They were on the twenty five yard line, and mm-hmm. it was fourth and one. And they lined up and they ran it, and they were able to get the first down. But my God, it was barely, barely, barely. And but it barely. seemed like it seemed like it was saying, "We have got to establish." The line of scrimmage, and and they were able to do it on that one play, and then they still, even after getting a first down at the twenty four, still had to settle for a field goal on that drive. And at that point, I thought they are in trouble. They are in big trouble in this spot. I they so so LSU rushing for the game, twenty six attempts for eleven yards. Eleven yards. Hang on. Uh, what was the the long? There was like, a, like the long a was eleven yards. Corey, no, Corey a, Kiner ran for 11 yards. on. Was it on 11? Play. I thought it was closer yeah. to 20 yards. Anyway, maybe it just seemed like it because they hadn't <laughs> ran four at all the entire day. So I was going to say, there's there's one long run in there that throws that whole stack completely off. Because if you don't get that, it's all negative. Now, the negative is because they college football is stupid and they don't know how to do stats, and they take sacks away from your rushing yards instead yeah. of your passing yards. It's a throwing play. It come off your passing yards, you moron. But anyway. Yes, Matt, so Max Johnson's stats was 11 carries for negative 12 yards, and yeah. he also had a long of 11 yards. And then they had team stats, so they had two rushes that were that were counted as sacks for negative 23 yards. And that's that's how you get to the 11, but uh, on average, you know, 0.4 yards per rush on that. Corey Kiner, five carries for 22 yards. Tyrion Davis-Price, five carries for 18 yards. Armani Goodwin, two carries for four yards. Like, they they don't have a running game. And no, in this offensive line, it, it, on the other side, the defensive line can't stop Auburn can't, from running. Well, like Gary, you and I have said this for as long as we've known one another. If you can't run the ball or stop the run, you can't win. Yes, Auburn, uh, twenty nine carries, one hundred and sixty three yards. That's five point six a clip. They had two rushing touchdowns. Uh, Bo Nix was the leading rusher, twelve carries for seventy four yards, and this was. Just about as debilitating a loss for LSU as, as I can remember. Yep. You always at least had the the streak over Auburn at home. Now, th- this is the next gauntlet for LSU, right? After this game, you lose to Auburn. Now you've got at Kentucky, who is undefeated. Luckily, they're coming off a major emotional win, so yep. it, that could set up well. But after that, you've got Florida, at Ole Miss, at Alabama, and Arkansas. Then you got Louisiana Monroe and then Texas A&M to close out, which neither one of those looks, you know, incredibly daunting right now. But this is a slate, man. This is rough. I don't know how this is. People have been talking about it since the opening game. Like, is O going to win enough to keep his job? 
And I have no idea at this point. Well, yeah, we don't know the answer to that. I will tell you that outside of Alabama, nobody scares me. I'm not. I'm a hundred percent certain we're not going to win all those games. We're probably not going to win half of them. But you're not going to lose them all either. But but I no longer feel like we're going to lose them all either. Okay. Yeah. Like I Mississippi State, uh, you know, showed the, the flaws of A and M. A and M looks absolutely beatable. Ole Miss doesn't look like the world beater. I know that we're not Alabama. I know this. Our offense can move the football on them. Our offense will look unbelievable against Ole Miss. We might lose that game. That's fine. I, I'm just telling you, it doesn't scare me the way I didn't think two weeks ago. I didn't think we had a chance in that game. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Kentucky, there's a we, we might go into Lexington and get our ass whipped. Okay. We you might could go also win Lexington the game. And just win the damn game. Yeah. So th- it's just one of those things where, you know, I, like I said, everybody in the SEC, not named Georgia and Alabama, will have three losses before this thing's over with. Kentucky's got five wins in a row. They've got a few games left that they could lose. I absolutely think they'll lose at least two of them. I, I tend <laughs> it to. It might agree. not be to us, but they're losing two of them because that's just the way the SEC is going to go down this year. Yeah. No, I, I do agree with you. Uh, Ghost Dog 50 said, Bo Nix better hold on to them running shoes. The dogs are coming. Uh, talking about Georgia this week. Auburn's got Georgia. Uh, Casey said, Bo Nix looking like my home's out there. Just ridiculous. And then he said, LSU is sneaky good. I think they beat my Wildcats next week. Uh, Jason said, LSU-Auburn was a very entertaining Tigers versus Tigers game. <laughs> of course it was. And uh, Jason Case also said, Bo Nix makes me, or has me thinking of uh, Ivan Drago because he has the high-rise spike hairstyle. He certainly does. Certainly does. Cheers to Bo Nix for... Facing played, all the adversity. He played his like, ass off. He won that game. He he systematically destroyed our defense. And, and on top of that, at, an even bigger deal, the fact that he played so poorly against Georgia State, he got benched. Everybody was questioning him all week. He got benched in this game. Yeah. And and TJ Finley comes out, throws three incompletions, does not look good. Bo Nix comes back in and immediately starts to look way better and makes some incredible play. Just if you hadn't seen the plays, go on Twitter. I mean, just they are. It's you don't unreal. have to. These it's highlights. Fine. You don't don't give them plays. Don't give them plays. Don't <laughs> these, these. these highlights are so stupid. So stupid. It's unreal. Uh, Mississippi but, but State. So much of that. So much of that is the LSU defense. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at Gary WCE at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.